Hello, everyone. Yeah, it's been uh, an interesting week. There's been a lot of changes and challenges and some really good things that have happened. And I'll share one of those at the end of the uh, live today. So thank you for joining. Oh, thank you for the, the, the hearts and the thumbs ups already. Jersey, how you doing? I'm so happy that you're here. Hey, Judy, how you doing? You know, we have really been building this community. Shelly, great. You know, we got people from Mexico. We have people from the East Coast, the Midwest. And um, I was thinking about the, the topic today. Embracing change, even if it hurts or is, you know, scary. And, you know, lately I have been involved with friends, family that have, have been going through some health challenges. We've been going through, oh, Judy's in England. Welcome. Uh, that, you know, what we're doing is, you know, adjusting to things that are happening to us. And so I wanted to throw out an idea that change is just something different. It, it, it's just not where we are right now. And so if we look at it and we have things changing in our lives, many times I think we're really conditioned that it's going to be bad. And so we prepare ourselves. We don't, we really like predictability. You know, if it all comes down to it, we like to know what the weather's going to be next week. We look at the weather channel. We look, you know, we, we just like that predictability. But on the reverse, we also want that variety, the thing that keeps us interested. Hey, Shirley, how you doing? How's Palm Springs? I bet it's hot. <laughs> I remember. So, you know, when we look at predictability combined with variety, how do we combine the two things and be able to get the, the true value out of change? And change is pretty automatic. It's, it's happening whether we want it to, you know, be there or not. And so the things that I wanted to really go over today is that, you know, there's three areas that I wanted to touch on. One is our businesses. Now, change in our businesses takes on a lot of different, uh, you know, avenues at times. I was told uh, years ago that I might as well get out of business, go get a job because I could not sell. And go figure, you know, a lot of what I do now is teaching sales processes. And so that we could have the economy. We could have clients that go away or clients that say they're going to use this and they don't. And so the changes that we have within our framework of the business, if we look at it as natural and normal, we're going to be able to embrace it as how can I get the most out of it? The, the second thing is really interesting because it's relationships. And all three of the areas today are really intertwined with each other because I really believe as we build our businesses, build our connections in whether or not you might even have a day-to-day -day job where you're a manager or you're interacting with other individuals in, on a team, and those relationships can get strained. There's an old adage that there's plenty of room at the top, and I, very, I really believe that. And the thing is, is that when we are growing, when we're doing the things that we're wanting to do and that we envision for ourselves, our family, and our business, many times there are people that choose not to come with us. And for them, it will feel, hey, Greg, for them, it will feel like we left them. And for my, I, I, I was thinking last night about this topic, and I was thinking about my boot camps. The one coming up in January will be my 33rd boot camp that I produced. And looking at some of the people that, for a number of those early boot camps, they were always there. And for whatever reason, they have now what I call graduated. They have gone on to other things for themselves. They have, you know, in reality, it's allowed them to grow. It's also allowed me to grow. Uh, and going into the relationships in my business life, there has been some individuals that I have connected with that if we, we did what we did for a season, and then we allowed that season to, you know, grow. And what's really interesting is some of those relationships are now, are now coming back around and we're reconnecting. 
And so while it feels really bad for some of those things to go away, in reality, if we don't allow that, we're not going to be able to grow and they are not going to be able to either. You know, there's a, a, a story in the animal world, the hermit crab. The hermit crab, as probably most of you know, uh, finds a shell and they grow in that shell. And when they get where they're not fitting anymore, they have a choice. They either get to leave the shell to find a new shell that's larger, but they, if they stay, it's going to be, you know, death. They're, they're not going to be able to grow. But during the time when they leave the shell and they find the new shell, that's when the change happens and that's when they're most vulnerable. And in that point, they have very directive, they're very focused, looking for that new home. But sometimes we have that, that feeling that, oh golly, if I leave, I, I, I'm just going to have all these devastating circumstances come up. And in reality, that's where all of the, the plums and the, the real joy happens. Hey, Gordon. And the, <clears throat> the third thing that I wanted to talk about is personal. You know, I, for whatever reason, again, I've been dealing with friends and family and clients that are dealing with health issues. And I think back when I was first diagnosed with multiple sclerosis and was told that I'd be dead or in a wheelchair in 10 years, and I thought, you know, why me? And I really wasn't in it, poor me, but I was wondering what I did or what I could do, what, what were the options? And in that moment, even though I had lost all of my feelings from the neck down, I lost the ability to walk, I lost the ability to write. But in that moment, I started thinking about, and this is the action steps that I want to give you, I started thinking about what positive things could come out of it. What was it that once I found out, because in that instance, they gave me three choices, a brain tumor, cancer, or multiple sclerosis. And for me, I, I actually told the neurologist, I said, fantastic, you gave me a life sentence. And he thought I was nuts. He thought I was crazy because he really thought that I was not going to be here. I'm on bonus time, guys, 17 years plus beyond what he thought I should be here. And so that's the diagnosis part of it. But, you know, look for what is the positive. What are the, the things that we can use in this change, in this circumstance that allows us to wake up? Sometimes those changes are the things that allows that, that awareness that there is gold right next to us. But if we were never stimulated, hey, Christine, uh, if we're never, uh, and Barry, how you doing? Oh, no, it was Christine and Barry. I'm sorry. Um, but if we don't have that adjustment, that pattern interrupt, we many times will not see the opportunities. And then another part of it is, do you have a choice? How can you adjust the change to get a result that you're really wanting? So instead of looking like we're on a, a you know, a ride that we have no control over, we're on a ship without a rudder, there's, you know, we're in a storm, Look at it and say, what can I do? What are the things that I have the ability to adjust to to get an even more positive result out of that? And here's a big one. Don't wait for the why. Sometimes we just want to know why this is happening and all these, you know, why did I get fired? Why did I lose that client? Now, it's not bad to look at it and ask the question, but if we wait around to have a solid answer, we're going to lose the biggest thing that we have going for us, and that is our momentum. That movement, that adjustment that we can make to be able to have that next reality that we do want. Hey, Linda, you know, the, that keeping that attraction, growing up in the desert in Palm Springs, and now living in Denver, in the desert we worked, or, um, dealt with sand. And if we got stuck in the sand or getting stuck in the snow like we do here in Denver, if we put more energy to the tires and wanting to know why we got stuck, we get more stuck. And really what we do is we back off the energy a little bit, look around, pay attention, look at that change, look at the options that we have, but keep moving forward. And so change is inevitably good for us. It's the thing that has allowed us to embrace the the things that, I, it's really back to the V8 moment. I could have had a V8. Sometimes it is taking the veil off the opportunity. Then it's our choice what we do with it. And that's really what I want to leave you with today is really this is about 
taking and having a conscious choice of how you relate to the change that's happening to you personally, to you and your relationships, and you and your business. So again, thank you for sharing and you know giving the, the hearts and the, the thumbs up and all that. And as we grow this community, I just want to make sure that I'm bringing you relevant topics. So again, the Gary at GaryBarnesInternational.com is my direct email. You can send me you know, thoughts and tips that you would like to see if you have suggestions. I'd be very, very up for that. And so, <laughs> I, you know, Judy, thank you so much. Hey, Kay, Carrie, Carrie, hey, Jersey. Um, so the, the thing I wanted to let everybody know, we just found a home for the boot camp in January. We're going to be at the Doubletree Hotel. We're signing the contracts. As we're speaking right now, Shelly is just finishing up those arrangements. And so we'll be sharing more about that later on. But anyway, have a phenomenal weekend. We'll see you again on Monday at 1 o'clock. And again, let me know what you'd like me to address. And, you know, I'd be happy to do that. So I, I appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you so much. And we'll see you again on Monday at 1 o'clock Mountain Time. Have a great weekend.